What's up BJJ fans and of course the BJJ stands for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. This week I'm at the Northern Sub only, which means I'm competing under a different rule set, a submission grappling rule set. I'm going to be using a lot of my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills. Submission only means that the only way that this match ends is by submission. So that can be armbar, that can be chokes, most Interestingly, in this particular competition, that can also include leg locks. Now, I do train leg locks in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so it's not something completely alien to me. It's not 100% part of my game, but hopefully we might uh, be able to integrate it today if it does come up. I'm really excited to do this comp. I haven't competed in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for about a year. This will be the first time competing as a blue belt. I'm competing for Fortified Jiu-Jitsu, where I train in Sheffield with Monkey, absolutely brilliant coach. This is going to be fighting at 75 kilos and under, blue belt category. 75-0-0. Go on, Miles. One thing to say is that I've spoken to the head ref. They will allow me to start on a grip, just because obviously I'm visually impaired. It'd be a bit rubbish if I just walk up and get choked from behind because I didn't see the guy. So yeah, we'll start from a grip, same as in judo. Hopefully it should all run great. Be able to do some good jujitsu. I'm looking forward to it. Let's take a look. So we're going to start out here on a grip, as I would hopefully do in judo as well. We move around a bit. This guy does do a little bit of stand-up. I try and go for a foot sweep, but then eventually I manage to just throw him with Marta Sinagi. Here he is attempting to re-establish a guard, defending the armbar that I would normally hit people with here, uh, which is he does very well, to be honest. The hardest bit about this is he then does re-establish an open guard. He manages to take my sleeve and thread it between his legs, so I have very little maneuverability. He also establishes a cross-collar grip, which you can't actually see from this angle, but that is one of the things that's scaring me the most because I'm not so worried about getting swept but I am worried about being uh, hit with submission attempts because if this match goes to a draw then the most possible the most submission attempts is going to be the person who gets the win. So my coach is telling me to disengage and stand which would be a good idea but firstly this guy has like some grips on my wrists and my sleeves that are making it very difficult for me to move and I'm not actually going to be able to do that and two it's a little bit playing the game and trying to reset so that I get to start standing. I don't really want to do that. I want to prove that I'm actually able to submit this guy on the ground and do real jiu-jitsu rather than me just trying to use my stand-up judo game to try and beat him. So he's now managed to close his guard, i.e. he's linked his feet behind my back. But I have managed to remove the grips that he had on my sleeve, so even though I am still in his guard so I have less submission opportunities, I'm no longer in a dangerous position where I could just get swept and choked immediately. So I feel a little bit more confident. Now I need to try and get past his guard or get to a more dominant position. So for the next while, most of what's happening is I'm just trying to go for my preferred pass, which would usually be an over the pass, or usually some people call it a Pedro pass. It does leave you open to triangles often if you do it wrong, so that's when he's trying to get his knee up past my shoulder, and he's going to try and link his feet behind. I managed to defend that, I also managed to keep my elbows in really close, so that he's not able to get an armbar. But I do have to defend that, which makes getting the pass itself much, much harder. We just sit in this position for quite a while, where... I'm trying to get past his leg and or maybe get to a half guard so I can start making some submission attempts because currently I'm down on submission attempts by probably quite a few so I'm currently losing this match. So in a second I'm about to get swept to my back but just because I allow it to happen so I'm going to try and get to a bottom half guard position because I have a lot more submissions that I can do from bottom half guard than I do from top half guard. The main thing that I do here is I'm going to lock down his leg so that I can break his posture and stop him being able to make submission attempts. Next, I'm going to establish a baseball grip, which you'll be able to see my hands in his lapel. Now, if people know how to defend a baseball choke, then they'll try and keep their hands in between my hands as much as possible, and they'll try and duck their head out. So you can see that he's trying to duck his head out from between my hands as much as possible. What you can't see from here, and my coach can't see either, is why he's saying, oh, just release the leg so that I can get a baseball choke, but my opponent has a cross-collar grip, meaning that if I do let go of his leg and try and attempt the baseball choke, what will probably happen is he'll be able to hit a bread and butter choke. When I let go of his legs, I'm going to give away the position that I have, which is going to be bad for me, so I'm only going to be able to win from the baseball choke in that position, so I really have to set it up perfectly before I attempt the submission. What I'm going to do here is I'm just waiting for him to let go of that collar grip so that I'm able to let go of his legs and spin under him. But it requires him to have his hands in the exact position that I want him to be so that I can get my baseball choke. Go, 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 go,
go, go, go, go, Miles. Yeah. Nice. Well done, well done, Miles. Yes, Miles. Well done, well done. Well done, Miles. Well, well done. done. There you go. Thank you. I told you what I was going to do. But you, you did great, that was good, good, and the takedown was lovely. I was a bit worried when I was in his garden, kind of had this cross choke, and at one point he had my sleeve, and I, yeah. okay, you know, focus on the position that you want, you know. Yeah. I was okay with the sweep because my bottom half guard's better than the top half guard, so I can know from bottom half guard, I can whack on baseball chokes. Uh, two more fights, we're in the semi final, let's go. He immediately pulls guard here because he's probably seen my fight before where I threw someone, I'm a second down in judo so my stand-up game is going to be a lot better than most people's so they tend to want to stay on the ground so they can avoid me throwing them. He's going to establish a full guard here and attempt a couple of loop chokes which is bad for me, he's already got a couple of submission attempts in I need to now try and pass his guard. I end up sitting back into a half guard position as pre in the previous match where I want to get my baseball choke but he defends that by attacking me with a cross collar choke but he leaves his hips up so I'm able to establish a full guard. He then sits up, I try and break his posture but he's going to fall back and attempt a straight footlock. I then realise this is happening and try and just run away escape. Now since I'm visually impaired, they're going to try and make us re-establish grips so that I know where he is. Uh, I was hoping they would stand us back up, but instead they start us from just an open guard position, which is definitely a position I'm not very good at. Think about passing the legs, Miles. Now this competition is unusual because not only are all leg locks allowed at blue belt, they're also all allowed in the gi, which is unusual because at most competitions, only purple belt and above can do leg locks and also heel hooks tend to be illegal in the gi. Now he's definitely hunting for leg locks. I've heard from some of my friends that who fought before that he like is a leg lock specialist. He knows lots of things in there, which definitely isn't part of my main game. So I'm playing the fire here. We end up in a 50-50 position where my legs are entangled with his legs. I do attempt to go for a knee bar, where it's like an arm bar but on his leg. I think we then roll through, but in doing this, I'm going to end up exposing my heel to him, and he's going to be able to get a heel hook. Probably with all the stuff I managed to defend and stuff. Yeah, it was a good, it was good, it was a good match. Yeah. I'd have to explain to all my messages what a heel was. <laughs> that was a leg lock. It's called a heel hook. It's basically where you take someone's heel, pin it to your side, and turn so that it twists the knee. And I'm going to tap on it. It's not like an arm bar where you can resist it or whatever. Once it's in, it's in. I don't want to get my knee popped. I don't want to get any disgusting. Uh, spiral fractures or anything and he did it perfect so yeah well done Tim yeah. okay go on to middle match now start out with an oso to go ending up in side control I managed to pass his guard immediately I go for the arm bar but he manages to keep his elbows in really quickly so I just secure the position get to a scaffold putting pressure on he doesn't like that he's going to try and push out of this by shrimping but in doing so when he frames he exposes his elbow Pull guard. Pull guard then. If you know they're going to pull guard, often, most often they'll do it on their sleeve side, like a Yoko Tomonegi, which means that Osoto works really well because you just blast it on the other leg. Went down, you know, didn't even have to pass the guard because I don't have the throw. Went for the armbar, but he really tight in, so just secure the side control. I know a million um, submissions from side control, so Americana, Udi Garami, like, uh, should we go on bra kind of thing. But I did the wacky guitar, my favorite armbar, literally my favorite armbar, when people push you out, push you out to try and create space. If they do it with their left arm, once their arm is extended, you bring it under your arm part, pump it, you play it like a guitar, and he taps straight off. There's nothing you can do once you're there. Bronze medal. Yeah, with two subs as well. I'm really happy with that. Hey, Miles. Well done. Well, I'm really proud of today. Had three fights, one, two of them. Any day where I come away with a positive win rate's fun. I lost the guy who got gold. The guy who got gold, he beat one of my mates with the exact same technique. He was, he's notorious for doing that, apparently. Um, but managing to hit a baseball choke, my favorite choke in the first round of the quarterfinals. 
I set it up, I was set up perfectly to be fair. I knew exactly where I wanted him to be, exactly what position I needed him to be, and I got it perfect. And I also got a new, beautiful throw on him as well. He said, oh, he's done 18 months of judo. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a second Dan. And then uh, obviously losing, losing the semi-final, but to someone who's obviously very good, pulled guard immediately, he knew to, so fine, fair enough, well done to him. And then in the bronze medal match of the throw, secured the position super quickly. Once I secured it, just pressure, pressure, pressure. He puts the arm across, use wacky guitar A lot of jiu-jitsu guys don't do that, but some judo guys do. So yeah, I'm really proud of myself for that. Bronze, two wins, did, uh, did everyone proud, I think, yeah. If you've enjoyed this and you're into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Judo, please check out my channel as well because I do lots of Judo for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for Judo, bringing the techniques together, making people who are good at stand up good at groundwork, making people who are good at groundwork good at stand up. If you want to be part of my blind Judo journey into international visually impaired Judo, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Saramade.